Today is the day of the taboo customs. This video today we are going to be replacing the transmission cooler lines in this 98 Jeep Wrangler I've got here behind me. Now in this Jeep Wrangler what we've got is we've got a bunch of cobbled up transmission lines that someone several owners ago cobbled up. Uh, there's several places where they leak and in general it's not a good situation because there's a good chance one of these lines is going to blow off or burst and then you're going to be stranded uh, wherever you're at. So we went and we bought a full kit to replace both lines from the transmission to the cooler and we bought that kit from a company called Fine Lines. So we will take a look at that kit and we'll take a look at what it's going to take to get them installed into this Jeep TJ. All right, so underneath the Jeep, it's going to be kind of hard to see. Back in there, you can kind of see some of our issues. We've got completely cobbled up lines. Right there, there's a union that leaks going into some 3 8 hard line to uh, another uh, union there that doesn't leak yet to yet another one. So there's three right there in a row. Uh, for the other line, you can maybe see it right there. Someone has bent it over. It's pretty well kinked. And then moving forward, you can also see on that line how we've got a couple of joints where they've uh, put a couple of hose clamps there. Like I said, they're, these are running at pressure, so there's a good chance that you can blow these hoses off. Um, but you can see how cobbled up this whole uh, mess is, and you can kind of see on our transmission how much uh, of an issue it looks like some of these leaks are being as they run back towards uh, the transmission and uh, start to run down and pretty much have dirtied up the whole rest of this Jeep. If you work on this Jeep, it's one of those there. Everything you touch, you end up uh, turning black because it's covered in oil and grease and dirt. All right, so looking at the entire kit that we got, first we got our two main hard lines that are going to run from the transmission back here forward. Got a couple of adapters so that we can connect uh, these lines to the transmission. Pre-bent lines running up to some nice stainless steel hoses uh, for both sides, and then the appropriate uh, tubes and fittings to connect to the radiator up front. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect these old lines from the uh, radiator and start to let them drain. You're going to get a lot of fluid going on all over the place, uh, so you're going to want to try to let it drain out somewhat. Um, to remove these, normally it's either uh, you can use the 16 millimeter uh, end wrench or preferably a line wrench, which uh, if you don't know what a line wrench is, you can see it's just a goes around a little farther, it allows you enough room just to slide it over the, the line, to loosen it up, just to help you keep from stripping the line out. Right, so then the next fitting we're going to take off is back here and that's the front fitting to the transmission and that's this large nut on this line here and it's a uh, 19 millimeter for the front one now one thing you're probably going to see 
especially like we see on this one, we go to try to take this off. You see the line just twists, so it doesn't spin on the line. So, you know, you can go and try cutting this off here and then take it off because you're not going to save this line. We're going to replace it. We don't need it anymore. But obviously, if we're going to try to reuse it, we try to get this freed up so it's spin on there. And that might have actually what, what happened to cause this kink here. Someone might have tried to go take this off and then kinked it and then just left it as is. So for the rear fitting here, uh, you can see this rear one, you're really gonna need to remove this bracket here. And it was a 14 millimeter bolt that came underneath. This is just a bracket that holds a linkage to the top of the, uh, the linkage here on the transmission, uh, then it runs up to the engine bay. Uh, you really need to remove this and then for this fitting, you know, it's one of these, you can squeeze these two in and apparently I didn't push it far enough in there. Squeeze these two tabs in and it does come out pretty easily. Then you'll need to remove this fitting here, which is a 21 millimeter. You just need to end wrench to get that off. Uh, remember on both of these, I believe on the front one, it already came out. And I think there's one on this as well, or it may be a complete uh, piece uh, on the front. There was a male to male connector that did come off with the front fitting. So just make sure that comes out because it does have to come out so you can put the new uh, fitting in there for the new lines. Here's a better look at the lines we pulled out. Like I said, you can see here how you used to have one of the push to connect fittings on it, but they put just a regular line, a couple hose clamps, really not a good idea. And then uh, back here, like I said, you know, I used a, this is where it's nice to have a little bitty uh, tube cutter, and I went ahead and cut this. Now you see on this one, there is a fitting that's in here that you have to make sure it comes out with this kit. Uh, fortunately, it came out with the fitting. Now you see on the, on the other line, you see we had one, two, three compression fittings joining that together, which uh, is creative, I guess. Um, anyway, it's on this back fitting, you don't have, you don't have this extra, you know, male to male fitting like you did on the front, so you don't have to worry about it. You just have to pull that out. So now we go ahead and start putting in uh, the other fittings. Now these are a tapered thread, uh, but we're still going to go ahead, put a little thread sealer on there, make sure it uh, seals up really, really well, and start screwing those in and start running our new lines. All right, so we're starting to run the lines here. We're going to point out a few. Now, the lines are supposed to run behind the exhaust. Obviously, there's going to be, you know, different exhaust systems and Jeeps, and who knows where it could be running. But then it's supposed to run along the edge of the, uh, the oil pan there on the driver's side. And there's usually some hold downs there that would hold it, but of course they're gone in this Jeep, so we'll find, have to go find something. Um, the long one, the one that connects to the back of the transmission, it's actually pretty good. I mean, well, I expected to have to make a few tweaks. We'll have to make some tweaks just here behind the uh, exhaust to get it up close to the oil pan. Uh, now the front one, though, we're going to have to tweak a little bit more. And you can kind of see there, we're not square up to our fitting in the transmission. So we're actually going to have to tweak that. Bit. And it looks like we'll have to do a similar bend back here to uh, get it up close to the bottom of the oil pan so that we can tie that off with those studs up there. I thought I'd show a little bit how I'm tweaking these lines. So what I did is I go in with a black marker and I mark where I want the bend to go. So of course, you know, mark, I want, to, I want this to bend a little bit this way, roughly about there. So I've got really an expensive bender here. Get it lined up. Put a little, little bit of a tweak into it, and then we'll chest fit it and uh, see if we need to make any more modifications. Obviously, we really just need to get it close. We want to make sure we keep it off the exhaust, and then we're able to get our clamps on it and hold it in place uh, once it's under the Jeep. All right, so we've got the main portion of the lines ran, which is the hard lines running up under the exhaust and then 
right off up there next to the oil pan. So now we need to work on the front section, which is two uh, flexible lines and then a couple more quick little fittings. So the last few steps here are really pretty simple. Now the kit comes with two flexible lines. They're both the same length and two fittings, which are pretty easy to figure out. We've got one fitting, it's an L, one fitting that's straight. Obviously the L will go on the other side of the radiator here on the passenger side. And get it screwed in. The straight one will go straight ahead of the lines. Now, the way they've designed the lines is that they're offset. Uh, one line sticks forward about six inches more than the other one, which makes it really easy because with these lines the same length, you're only going to be able to reach that other side, the passenger side, with this longer line. So it kind of takes a guesswork out of which one you're going to hook it to. So but basically, these are all just push to connect fittings. So now we're going to tighten these fittings up, push these hoses on, then we'll check for leaks. All right, so we've taken it out for a uh, couple of drives and now, and it looks like we're to the point now where we don't have any leaks. Now, on the first drive, we did actually have a leak at this fitting up here. Now, um, something to remember about these flared fittings and working with dirty old Jeeps is that you have to, when you put them together, make sure you don't have any dirt uh, inside the flare. Of course, it's gonna probably not want to see correctly and then a leak on our second time out here we've got it cleaned up and fixed that uh, small little leak but definitely a much 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 improved uh, set of transmission cooler lines so we definitely uh, recommend the uh, the company fine lines for for this type of setup so anyway that'll do it for this video uh, thanks for watching and as always a like and subscribe